Hunt, the Major League Baseball draft. Cole Henry, Daniel Cabrera, what'd you think? Uh, I thought both kind of went where I thought they would, maybe a few picks later. Uh, I, I heard y'all talk in the first segment, and I think it's always fun to say, oh, they could come back and they could get more money. But the, the fact of the matter is that more often than not, every situation is different, but more often than not, a phone call has already been made to the advisor or to the family mm. before the pick is made. Here's what we've got. Is that good enough? And more often than not, they say yes, because they're just not going to make that pick if they're going to be a million dollars off on the signing bonus. Yeah. I mean, of course, it happens every year. Like, it's, I'm not saying it can't happen, but very, very likely both of them took phone calls and they said, here's what we got, and they said yes. So I would be stunned if either one uh, gave a thought of coming back to Baton Rouge. Uh, what about Beck Way? He, he, he goes a little bit later, the junior college transfer, four seven four hundred seventy two k uh for his slot value. What do you expect there? Same thing. Um, <laughs> now, he's in the fourth round, so the teams – don't get a compensatory pick if they don't sign him. So they've got more incentive to actually use that money and sign him. Uh, I, it was just, it was a slim chance that they were going to get him. I love him. I think he's going to be a really – he would have been a stud uh, college pitcher. I mean, he's mm. got a really good slider. He throws hard. He's got a, a, a little, little moxie to him, a little attitude. I think he would have been a, just incredible at the back end of the bullpen with Bontano. Um, but uh looks like he's going to move on. For the most part, though, LSU stayed pretty clean, right? It was just about what you thought. You thought Henry and Cabrera would, would get drafted and go. You thought that um, Beckway would get drafted and go. Uh, you thought that Drew Romo would get drafted and go. I mean, obviously, the news of Dylan Cruz came two weeks ago, and that was one you did not expect to get to campus. But the rest of the signing class stayed intact. Uh, De- Devin Fontenot was not drafted. He said he's going to come back, so there's your closer. Um, so yeah, I think that it was it was pretty good. There's there's some impact back coming, and that's what LSU needed. We were pretty honest during the first four weeks of the season that there was a, a talent issue on that team in the lineup. The, the arms were great, and they'll continue to be very very good. Uh, but they they injected some some bats into this lineup. When you talk about Cruz, Brody Dross can can really swing the bat from the left side with some power. So that's a really good thing. Um, you know, I think Tosh Lloyd has got a chance to to be a really good player. So they, they've got some, some talented bats coming in this class. Hunt, who's on the bubble for making this roster, and how difficult of a challenge is it going to be for this coaching staff to, to get to the 35, or I, I guess with whatever the rules allow this season? Yeah, they're bumping that up to, I think, 41 or 42. Uh, I think they're – I got to do – I'll do this in math before I get to Hester's show, but I, I think that they're three or four or five over somewhere right there, that handful, and there's no rule that says you have to have that – cut down in the next week they don't have to do that until christmas now pulmonary's preference is to do that before the fall just as in fairness to everyone so you've got a chance if you're if you're asked to maybe look somewhere else to get a fall under your belt and compete at that new school so it's it's an unfortunate situation but i think everyone at this point is, is big boys and we can figure it out this is an unprecedented circumstance and some decisions have to be made you can't make everybody happy so I, I don't know that I'm going to na- name specific names of guys, but uh, obviously some of the conversations have already taken place because Hal Hughes has moved along, Chase Costello has moved along, Eric Walker moved along, Drew Bianco looked and decided that he wanted to, to come back. So obviously you know, this is not something that is brand new. We've known about this for a couple of months now, and they've started to make some moves. Hey, Hunt, uh, I'm, I was thinking about this earlier, and I was asking Jordy, but I think you're probably better to ask. Uh, so Thank you, T. With Cole Henry and <laughs> Daniel Cabrera both being second-round picks, right, those are, those, are, those are high draft picks, um, w- but, but, but not really leaving much of a legacy at LSU, right? Like when you look at the winning that LSU's done traditionally, how, how often, Hunt, you've been watching them your entire life, how often is it that you see guys go – this high, but then you think back on their time at LSU and kind of nothing really is going to stand out. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about Henry um, last night. It's He was not in the rotation to begin his freshman year, and then they went to Texas and were getting hit around a little bit, and he came out and threw, I think, four or five really good innings out of the bullpen against Texas. In a game they lost, they got swept in that series. Mm-hmm. And, you know, after that, uh, well, this guy's pretty good, and they let him start, and he kind of became a guy that was striking a lot of people out, looking really good, and then his arm hurt. And so, he, you know, we sat for a couple of weeks, and then he came back and felt pretty good, and he goes out there in the 
in the super in the regional and his arm doesn't feel good and so he had to sit in the regional and didn't pitch in the super and then obviously his sophomore year he comes out and boy he looked really good to start he was so 97 miles an hour against texas and then he's this next start his velocity's down and his arm hurts and he was going to get moved back a spot against Ole miss so it's just it was just kind of a flash and it was never he's never really given an opportunity in the, under the brightest lights like you know lane got to go up to omaha of course nola did as well renato all those guys have had their omaha spot kevin gosman never got there in his two years either mm. um but yeah it's just it's disappointing that he didn't get a chance to to, to pitch on the under the brightest lights and he could have come back and i very likely would have made more money next year but you're also running the risk if you do that if his arm hurts again next year at some point during the season and he misses a week or two weeks or his yeah. velocity dips, a lot of MLB teams would just put a red X on his name and say he's not draftable. He spent three years in college and couldn't finish two months in any of them. We can't, we can't give this guy seven figures. So at this point, it's a sure thing, and he take it and get it. Yeah, man, I, I definitely understand it from that perspective. Uh, Hunt, do you feel comfortable in trying to project next year's week in rotation? Yeah, I feel comfortable with with the names. I, I think that you would certainly look at Jaden Hill, Landon Marshall, and AJ Labus to start with. Um, Let's go. I, mean. I, I, I there are probably some other names that could factor in there, but I, I like Devin Fontenot as at the closer. I think he fits really well at the back end of the game. Um, man, if you could have gotten, if you got real greedy and got Henry and uh, and Beck Way, it would have been something. And you go, well, that's just not possible. Well, it happened in Gainesville. They've got two guys who were top 50 prospects and Tommy Mace and um, and uh, Jack Leftwich and both those guys are, are, are going back to Florida and they got a signing class with a couple more in it so Jeez. seems to happen like that in Nashville and Gainesville more often than not but uh, I think that LSU starts with those three and it's a pretty good place to start. Hunt Palmer joining us here from the LSU Sports Radio Network he is on Twitter at Hunt Palmer 88 is where you can follow him. Uh, Hunt, we were talking uh, yesterday uh, about the quarterback position with LSU football right now, a spot for decades uh, that, that has just been a almost a guessing game uh, for, for the immediate season, now seems to have a, a projection over the next decade of players in this state that LSU has already targeted. Walker Howard, Jamie Howard's son, is set to commit today. Uh, Arch Manning is down in New Orleans. Eli Holstein is up at Zachary. Both those guys are freshmen who hold LSU offers. When you look around the state and you see the the health of the quarterback position uh, and LSU stability there, uh, what do you think of of the lineage of quarterbacks coming in? I think it's really exciting. I think it is maybe a little bit coincidental that there's a lot of you know um, guys coming in with bloodlines and family history at that position and in the game. But, you know, we had Josh Booty on yesterday, and, and I kind of asked him about, you know, is he and Peyton early, and then there was kind of a stretch where Louisiana just wasn't putting any any quarterbacks out that weren't worth anything. And he said, I think it's just the offense that the teams are running. If you look, if you think about the history of, LSU, of, of football in the state and some of the powerhouse programs, think of the offenses that West Monroe and Curtis were running in the 90s and in the you know, 2000s. I mean, they're running, like, the option, the deer, and they're running the ball far, far more than – then they're passing it. Evangel's the only team that was getting back in the shotgun and throwing it, and LSU wasn't getting any of those guys. They were all going somewhere else. So now everybody's in the gun. Everybody's spreading it out. Everybody's throwing it all over the field, and Louisiana's starting to put some some quarterbacks uh, out, and that's a good thing for LSU because we know they're going to be able to get everything else. They can get the quarterback position worked out like it looks like they have. It'd be pretty dangerous. All right, we got it. We got. We were talking about the quarterbacks currently on the roster. Uh, right now, and Miles Brennan, obviously the fourth-year junior, and you've got Max Johnson and T.J. Finley. And yesterday, when we were projecting ahead, we left Finley kind of out of the discussion. And, and I didn't do it on purpose, but there were some people on Twitter that were talking about, uh, you know, Finley being a, a a true competitor in this quarterback race. When you hear the coaching staff talk about the QBs, it's always about Max Johnson. And you see the social media on Johnson. Have you heard anything on T.J. Finley and where he kind of fits in? to this competition or as a true freshman where he is kind of in the lineup? Well, I think it's not necessarily – I don't really need to know where he fits in with Mac Johnson right now because it's in the event that we that LSU's got to go to Max Johnson or T.J. Finley pretty quickly here, something's going wrong. Either Brennan's hurt or it's been a failure. And I just don't – I don't think either one of those things happening is very good news for LSU. I think this is Miles Brennan's football team. 
and DJ Finley has every tool you could imagine that he needs to get in there and get his get his every rep he can and compete with Max Johnson and Garrett Nussmeyer next year. And if his number gets called, that's great. He's a physically gifted guy. There have been plenty of guys that I've watched on that practice field at LSU at quarterback and went, that's not that's not good enough. And that's not the case with Finley because he's got every he's got all the talent you could ask for. But right now, he's not ready to play, and I, I don't think he has to be. Everybody's all American, Hunt. You got a week to watch it. I can make it happen. All right, man. We'll see you. Have no, a good you have to watch Pineapple Express, Hunt. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll I'll watch Everybody's All American next week. We'll make it work. Later, man. Damn.